How's life, everybody? Good? Well, that's good to know because I'm Karara, and today we're going to be talking about how to make your life even better. Wow! Today I'm going to be talking about STEM Olympiads and how to be successful in high school. I know I've done a lot of specific videos on specific Olympiads in the past, like Isako and Isadmo, but today I wanted to do a general overview. So I'm probably going to talk about what exactly the Olympiads are that are offered in the United States, but also what Olympiads you should do based on how hard it is, what type of recognition there is, and how much studying you have to do. So let's first begin by laying some groundwork. Why in the world should I do Olympiads? And the answer to that is that, first off, it provides brain stimulation. No, really, your brain's like a muscle and using it more makes it stronger. It's simple biology, I guess. No, not, not really. Gotta make your brain as big as these biceps. Oh, this is, ugh. Ugh. This is, why, this is why you gotta work out. For me, Olympias have just made school a lot easier. Like, I don't have to study as much for tests. I do test a lot faster than other people now. And just, it's all around easier. And if you're able to get through school tests without doing these Olympias, good for you. That means that you're a good studier and that you're good at retaining things in your brain. But the problem is that when you get to college, the tests look a lot more like Olympias. Like over the summer, I was taking college courses at Berkeley and they have tests where th the answers are not at all obvious. You actually have to like, Take concepts that you know and craft them into a solution in a way that's like not obvious. So seriously, Olympiads are just good college prep. And of course, what you've all been waiting for, Olympiads are good for college apps. Because Olympiads are super prestigious. Colleges like to see that people are super smart and Olympiads are a great measure of that. So now that you know why Olympiads are so good, let's talk about the Olympiads themselves. Starting with the least memorization focused ones and my favorite, the Math Olympiads! The great thing about Math Olympiads is that they're super problem solving focused. You don't have to learn much outside of what you already learned in school. In addition, you learn math every single year of school. So you're not going to have to like learn a completely new subject on your own time. You already learned most of the stuff you got to know just from going to school. Of course, there's a couple like obscure things like probability which is not taught in school and like cyclic quadrilaterals which are specific geometry topics that are not taught in school. But other than that, you're basically set. The thing that is hard about Math Olympiads is the actual problem solving aspect. And that is widely applicable to everything, not just math. So essentially, by getting good at Math Olympiads, you're getting good at everything else. So the Olympiads start with AMC8, which is for people under 8th grade. Personally, I don't think it's very useful because honestly, it's not that hard to get a super good score on AMC8. And even if you do super well on AMC8, you probably won't go up the chain into the AMC10s and the Amy's. Where it starts mattering is AMC10 and 12. So they're both 115 minutes, 25 problem, multiple choice exams. And you might be saying, hey, it's multiple choice, easy, easy money, we don't even have to try. But no, it's actually extremely hard because not only are the questions themselves hard and it's not it's a one fifth probability you get it right even if you do a complete guess, there's also a penalty for guessing. So no, not at all easy. In terms of difficulty, the AMC 12 is basically just the AMC 10 except you chop up the first five problems and add five harder problems at the end. But really, all of them are basically covering the same topics. You got counting and probability, you got algebra, you got geometry, you got number theory, and that's basically it. Once you have all those bases covered, then you just gotta keep doing problems until you get a certain amount of problem solving skills down. If you do super well in AMC 10 or AMC 12, you get into Amy. And what's really cool about AMC 10 and 12 is that they have two levels of distinction, both of which would make Amy, but the first level is just honor roll. That means you did top 2.5% in that test. If you do super well in AMC 10 or 12, you get into the Distinguished Honor Roll, which is the top 1%. So even if you don't do that well in AMI, you still get extra recognition for doing super well in AMC 10. The reason I would recommend Math Olympiads for everybody is because it's not that hard to get super good recognition, but at the same time, it's super applicable to other things, and you don't even have to learn that much extra stuff. It's seriously a really good deal. But on to the next part of the Math Olympiads, AMI. This is a lot longer of a test, three whole hours, but only 15 problems, so as you might guess, the problems are way harder, and it's only for the top 2.5% in each exam. So basically for Amy, there's only one recognition level. You either qualify for Isajmo or Isamo, or you don't. That's why in my opinion, it's better to focus your time on doing well in AMC 10 and 12, and then if you think that you have a chance of getting Isajmo or Isamo, then focus the heck out of Amy. And then if you make Isajmo and Isamo, then it's just, you're really good at math. But if you want to go farther, you gotta learn how to do proof. All the previous ones are computational based. There's a specific answer, and there's only one way to, well, there's not one way to do it, but yes, there's a specific answer. In Yusadmo and Yusamo, you had to actually write proof, and this is a lot harder and a lot different style, and you had to learn like a completely new way of doing things. So it's basically six problems over the span of two days, 
and nine hours total, which is pretty crazy if you think about it. I personally was so tired after the end of those nine hours, I was like dying. But yeah, if you do Super Bowl on that, you can either get recognized as a uh, Yusama or Yusadma winner, and if you do Super Bowl, you can also make Mop, which is basically the math camp, and if you do well in Mop, then you go to Imo and blah blah blah. The, the rest of it is not that interesting, and if you're there, then you probably don't even need to be watching this video at all. And that's all I gotta say for the math competition, time to move on to the next. So the second least memorization based content, Isaka. Okay, this might be a bit of a shady area because you gotta learn a whole new language, but at the same time, if you know a language, then there's not much else to learn. Because really, Isaka is just applied math, really. Once you know a language, all you gotta do is learn the algorithm and data structures, and once you have that, you're basically set. You take all the problem skills and solving skills you learn from Math Olympias and just apply them to like CS. What's also really, really nice about Yusako is that there's four contests each year. Each one's four hours, three problems. So there's very no no likelihood of making silly mistakes, basically. You get multiple chances too, so it's like the best deal there is. If you're really prone to silly mistakes, this one's like the best one for you. The levels of recognition, they're pretty straightforward too. You start with bronze. If you do well on bronze, you go to silver. If you do well on silver, you go to gold. If you do well on gold, you go to platinum. If you do well on platinum, you go to camp. And if you do well on camp, you go to IOI. And yeah, pretty pretty simple. The main thing you gotta focus on if you wanna do Yusako is learning algorithms and data structures. And there are a bunch of courses out there to do that. Two down, three more to go. Time for some Yusufo! Welcome to the Physics Olympiad where you gotta learn all of physics. Okay, well not quite. Well, let's explain this. So physics is a really big category, right? There's kinematics, there's conservation of energy, there's rotational inertia, torque, all that good stuff. And then there's also E and M, there's blah, blah, blah. There's like thermodynamics. So physics is a massive field. So there's a lot to learn. But luckily they divide it up like this. The first level is F equals MA, which is a 25 question multiple choice test. And it basically only covers kinematics and all the AP Physics 1 stuff, which does not include ENM or thermodynamics, so it's a lot more focused and you don't have to learn that much. It's still a lot, but less. Between EVMA and the next level, there's only one level of recognition and that is qualifying for the next level, obviously. So it is a pretty steep learning curve, but if you make the cut, then you're in Yusufo, and that has a lot more recognition. So Yusufo is basically a proof-based contest. There's six problems similar to Yusadimo, except a lot less hard problems. You can either get an honorable mention, a bronze medal, a silver medal, a gold medal, or to get to camp. Only the top 20 make camp, so if you're not super super good, you're not going to make it, obviously. But there's so much other recognition that if you're decently good enough to get into Yusufo, it's really worth the effort, because you can distinguish yourself even with the like, smallest amount of improvement. What's unfortunate about it is that you're not only limited to AP Physics 1 stuff, now you got all the AP Physics 2 stuff. So you gotta learn thermodynamics, ENM, relativity, and more stuff that like you wouldn't have to learn if you just wanted to do EVMA. So basically, probably like half of the people just know kinematics or are not that good enough to get any other problems right in the use of it. So essentially, if you could just get a little bit better enough to solve one problem, you're already an honorable mention. Like personally, I solved one kinematics problem on the use of it, and I already got an honorable mention. And it wasn't even that like crazy of a kinematics question. It was literally just graphing the motion of a ball. So if you're passing EFMA, putting in that extra effort is extremely worth it because there's so many levels of recognition you use both. So yeah, if you're willing to learn physics or you've already learned it through AP Physics 1 and 2, then use is a great option. And honestly, physics is a pretty applicable thing. Like it helps with engineering, helps with just theoretical physics. It's super interesting. There's a lot of other stuff that it could be applied to. And generally, the Physics Olympiads are pretty good options if you're also interested in math. The good triad is basically math, physics, and computing. Because all of them are basically applied math. Three down, two to go. Time for some USNCO! Okay, so this is the one I know the least about because I didn't take it yet. But I have a basic idea from what other people tell me. I've also learned chem in school, and I know that I personally do not like it. There's a lot of random concepts to learn, like who wants to memorize solubility rules? If you learned about solubility rules, you probably know that they're really annoying to memorize. There's a bunch of other random stuff you gotta memorize in chemistry, and the test itself is more about memorization than all the other tests we've mentioned so far. The test itself is 60 questions in 60 minutes. That's like one minute per question. So it's either you know it or you don't. There's not much application involved here at all. However, if you get past that round, then you're in for the more fun stuff. Because in the next round, there's a lab section. So that so that basically means you carry out a lab, you get a result, and if you did it well, then, and get the correct result, then you move on to the next round. Now, I personally don't want to do that because I've tried lab work before, 
For like in ninth grade summer, I had this like research program thing, and I tried to dissect flies, and I could not even cut the head off. It was crazy. Okay, let's not talk about such morbid stuff there. But yeah, I don't know. That's what I think about Ken. First, you gotta do a ton of memorization, and then you gotta do a ton of practical stuff. And if your motor skills aren't that good, I don't know how, exactly how well you could do that. I'm, I'm not a master at this one, so sorry about that. And now we get to the most memorization heavy contest. The infamous Yusubo. It's pure memorization. Like, literally pure memorization. There's nothing else that could be said about it. Like the first round, 50 questions, 50 minutes, you know it or you don't. There's, there's no other in between area. There's no partial credit, there's no, like, there's no application of concept. It's just spit out what you got. And the next round's even worse. It's literally 120 multiple choice questions plus a short answer section that's super long. All in 120 minutes, so that's like less than one minute per question. And I don't even know what this, like, what Yusubo does even with their test. Like, when I was in ninth grade, I took the test, and the short answer was three pages. And it was not even worth that many points. Then the next year I take it, wham, it's like eight pages and worth like 140 points. That's like just as much as the multiple choice section. Now, honestly, it's not that bad because the top 10%, which is a pretty big percent compared to the other Olympiads, get into the next round. So, if you want a simple recognition without having to, like, be really good at problem solving, just do Yuzubo, because Yuzubo is more about the time you put into it. If you put in a lot of time, you're eventually going to memorize all the stuff. And once you have all the stuff memorized, you're basically set. So if you just want something quick for your resume, do Yuzubo, but, or, or if you're interested, of course. If you're super interested in biology, then do Yuzubo. But otherwise, don't do it. Not worth your time. And it's just, I don't know, memorization is boring. Like, who wants to memorize, like, an entire textbook? The way I studied for it, it was literally flipping through the biology textbook, which is called Campo, seven times. I did it seven whole times. I literally wasted my whole freshman year doing it. But I mean, it comes in handy now. I, I could do science bowl, biology, it's, it's all good, and I don't regret it. But yeah, it's, it's too much memorization for me. So let's just break it down real quick. If you do really well in the first round, which is the 50 question, 50 minutes, then you go into the second round, which is the 120 question, blah, 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 I don't know what happens there. Then, you, if you do super well on that, you make top 50, then you get a recognition, and if you make top 20, you make camp. So yeah, that's basically it. That's all I got for Olympia. That's all the important stuff you gotta know to make your decision. So basically when you're making your decision, you should think about two things. First, do I, am I interested in it, of course. Second, is it applicable? How much more do I have to learn? And third, is there a possibility I get recognized for it? Because honestly, if you don't get recognized for it, it's really not worth it. Like, you put a ton of effort into something, not get recognized, and all that work is just wasted. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. If you guys enjoy this kind of advice video, just let me know down in the comments. If you want any specific advice videos on any of these contests, please let me know, because I really want to do stuff that you guys find interesting. So please, let me know. As always, if you enjoyed the content, leave a like and subscribe for more. Thank you guys so much for watching, and see you guys next time!